Hello, members of First United Methodist Church. It is Sunday, December 6, 2020. It is the second Sunday of Advent in the year B of the liturgical years. These are the readings that we will be looking at and referring to. But let's begin with the Advent wreath itself. We are in the second week lighting the second candle, which is known as the Bethlehem candle, because we are remembering Joseph and Mary's trip to Bethlehem with Jesus. That candle is also known as the faith candle. And the theme of this week is faith. Last week it was hope. This week it is faith. And remember that these candles are important in our spiritual life because they are a symbol of the coming of the light of God through his son, Jesus Christ. December 6th also happens to be the feast day of St. Nicholas. And St. Nicholas is the saint that many believe Santa Claus is based on. The uh, true story is that he was living in a section of Asia Minor. At the time it was in Greece, it's now on the southern coast of Turkey. And he was raised to be a devout Christian. His parents happened to die in an epidemic when Nicholas was still young. But he continued to obey the words to sell what he owned and to give his money to the poor. So he used his own inheritance to assist the needy, the sick, and the suffering. And he dedicated his life to serving God. He was named the Bishop of Myra while he was still very young. Under the Emperor Diocletian, he was persecuted and sent to prison, but the prisons were so full of bishops, priests, and deacons that it was they were lacking room for real criminals, so he was exiled after that. He later in life attended the Council of Nicaea, and he died December 6th in the year 343 in Myra. So that's why December 6th is his feast day. There are many different stories. Probably the most well-known story is about the, the man who had three daughters who was very poor, therefore had no, nothing to offer as a dowry. And they were, would therefore, because they could not be married, would be made into slaves. Um, and so Nicholas took pity on them and tossed a bag of gold into the house three separate times, once for each of the daughters. That is the legend. And according to the legend, um, they landed, the bag of gold landed in the stockings or shoes that were left by the fire to dry. So that is what led to the custom of children hanging stockings or putting shoes out. As a child, I myself was put my shoes out every December 5th and they were filled with candy. So when I woke up on the morning of December 6th, it was a very exciting day for me. Now we will begin with the readings. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up 
and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your Lord. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now a section of Psalm 85, verses 1 through 2, and then 8 through 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we will listen to Charles Wesley's hymn, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. This particular hymn is perhaps the most personal hymn ever written by Charles Wesley. The understanding of Jesus as a lover seems to have been something that made people squeamish to express that type of sentiment publicly. But it is one of his best hymns demonstrating his knowledge of biblical texts, classic literature, and other intellectual sources of his time. Um, this, the, many of the words from this hymn actually come from the wisdom of Solomon. This particular version is being sung by Fernando Ortega, and the music is by Joseph Perry. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly, while the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high hide me oh my Savior hide till the storm of life is past safe into the haven guide oh receive my soul at last Yeah. 
refuge have I none Hangs my helpless soul on Thee Leave, ah, oh, leave me not alone Still support and comfort me All my trust on Thee is stayed All my help from Thee I bring Start all I want More than all in Thee I find Raise the fallen, cheer the faint Heal the sick and lead the blind Just and holy is Thy name I am all unrighteousness False and full of sin I am Thou art full of truth and grace Grace with Thee is found Grace to cover all my sin Let the healing streams abound Make and keep me pure within Thou of life the fountain art Freely let me take of Thee Spring thou up within my heart, rise to all eternity. A reading from the second letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening 
the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, try to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now a reading from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now those of you who know me well, know that John the Baptist is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. This is the very first chapter in Mark, and Mark was the very first gospel written. So this is how Mark chooses to begin the story of Jesus Christ coming into our lives. This is significant. It is John the Baptist, as was read about in the reading from Isaiah chapter 40. He is preparing the way. He is the messenger who is coming ahead of us. And he is seeking to encourage us to repent, as Peter talks about in his second letter. And we are encouraged to continue to wait for the Lord. The Lord is coming. But while we are waiting, we are encouraged to strive to be at peace with each other, with the world, to to be prepared for the second coming of God by living the type of life that Jesus will proceed throughout the gospel to describe to us as the way. It's exciting. It's encouraging, especially right now when many of us are feeling so alone, isolated, afraid. To know that Jesus is with us, that God is with us, the Holy Spirit is with us, we have our Creator, our Savior, and our Sustainer with us at all times. And we ourselves are capable of spreading the joy 
of God to all people everywhere through prayer, through conversation, through our own personal example of goodness. May God be with us all. Now we will listen to the hymn, Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Dwell, written by Marty Hagen. It is a, an encouragement for inclusiveness, strength, and beauty in worship and in the practicing of our faith. It demonstrates how we are called to share the love that Christ has given each one of us, how we are encouraged to share the love of the Trinity with all we encounter. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell How hearts learn to forgive Built of hopes and dreams and visions Rock of faith and vault of grace Here the love of Christ shall end divisions All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place Let us build a house where prophets speak And words are strong and true Where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone To heal and strengthen, serve and teach And live the word they've known Hear the outcast and the stranger Bears the image of God's face Let us bring an end to fear and
we will close with this set of prayers that you can go back to as the week goes on if you would like to reflect on them. These come through the Divinity School at Vanderbilt and there's a different prayer for each day of the week. So we will pray it as one continuous prayer. Let us pray. God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectation. Make us ready for the message that prepares the way. Make us ready that with uprightness of heart and holy joy, we may eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. God of hope, you raised up John the baptizer as a herald who calls us to conversion. As we joyfully await the glorious coming of Christ, we pray to you for the needs of the world. God of hope, you come to us and bring us home. Comfort us with the expectation of your saving power made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear our humble prayer that we may serve you in holiness and faith and give voice to your presence among us until the day of the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. God of hope, you call us from the exile of our sin with the good news of restoration. You build a highway through the wilderness. By your grace, transform our prayers from your words to deeds that we may live as a holy people in the dawn of your peace, redeemed from all that divides us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we will close with something I thought may cheer you up a little bit. It is a children's virtual choir singing It's a Wonderful World. Have a good week. God be with you all. Yeah.